Hey guys, this is McCoy Buck, and I'm going to talk about bone dynamics in Anime Studio, and also how they can help create principles of animation for you. So as you can see, this is what your animation will look like without bone dynamics. And this is what it will look like with them added. It's very easy to do, and I will walk you through how to set up your squash and stretch and your overlapping actions in a two-part series. You can download this character for free from my Gumroad page, or if you'd like to support me, you can also pay what you think is fair. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in the last tutorial, we created this really simple character. Um, basically, we did the squash and stretch, and now we're gonna do the overlapping action, or the secondary action, for his ears. So that when he land, lands, his ears will flop down, and as he jumps up, his ears will flop backwards. So it looks more realistic in Anime Studio. All right, so for starters, let's go ahead and go into the first part of his ears. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my bone constraints, drop that down, and I'm gonna click on Bone Dynamics. Okay, so you've probably seen Bone Dynamics and maybe have been wondering how the heck to use Bone Dynamics uh, because it's not really clear in the Anime Studio manual of really what everything does. So I'll explain it for you. Your torque force is basically what is going to be controlling the movement. And this is actually going to be influenced by the parenting bone. So if we pull up our parenting bone on our keyboard here, you can see the parent bone is the head. So the head actually, this head bone, let's go ahead and highlight it, moves back and forward, as you can see there, quite a bit throughout this animation. Right there, it moves back, okay? So what we're wanting to do is when this head is moving back and as he's jumping up, his ears are going to be behind him. As he gets to the top of the peak right here, his ears will flop forward. And as he goes back down, his ears will go back up. And then as he hits the ground, the ears will, will flop back down. And as it moves to his jumping position, the ears will flop back into place. So basically that spot right there. And then it will just continue to cycle. So what we're going to do is we're going to control the torque first. And we'll just focus one thing at a time. So the torque is going to be the movement, essentially. Okay, so all you have to do, just for starters, let's go ahead and actually I'm going to set that at zero. I'm going to play out this animation. And again, just like we did in the last tutorial for squash and stretch, I'm going to do everything in real time. So let's go ahead and turn on our torque to the 10. All right, so as you can see there, that is how far that's going to be torquing. If we go ahead and we move this a little bit more, that's probably the effect that I'm looking for, okay? So I want his ears to actually be pretty influenced by the parenting bone of his head. The next thing that we're gonna go to is the spring force. Now the spring force is how far that movement is going to go. And if you have the high, uh, if you have the value up really high, it's actually gonna give you that springy effect of like the boing. Um, so let's go ahead and change that up a little bit. Okay. So again, there are his ears. I don't want them, the bottom of his ears to be influenced drastically and I don't want everything to be flinging back. I want the top portion of his ears to be flinging back. I want the bottom portion of his ears to be a little bit more stiff. So I'm just going to do something like that. Looks pretty good. The damping force, if I have that at zero, you can see that springiness is going to come into effect. So what damping force does, so you have your movement, how far it moves, and then how long it moves for, basically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn up our damping effect, our damping force, excuse me, to around 80, around 80 will be good. Um, and like I said, if you think about damping, there's something like a lot of movement going on and then it moves through jello or through pudding or some substance of that sort, it's going to start slowing down. And that's exactly what damping force is, is it's slowing down, it's, uh, I don't know, adding, <laughs> I don't know how to exactly describe it. Um, but it's basically just making it more, uh, less movement there. So the next ones that we're gonna focus on on the ears are these two parts right here. So let's go ahead and let's turn that on. Bone constraints. 
See, so this is one thing that I want to show when you're doing it in real time is make sure you always make sure you're on frame zero because it's gonna turn that bone constraints on and off because you can see there, that's the channel for the bone constraints as it's going across, that is the keyframe that it's creating. So if that's what it's doing, just go ahead and turn that off. Um, I don't want to. I actually don't want to delete that main channel because that's controlling my other bone constraint. Okay, so make sure everything's still good. Good. Okay, and I'm going to turn my bone constraint on first, my bone dynamics, and then I'm going to push play. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So now let's go to the torque. Okay, so that's how much that's moving. That's kind of where I want it. Okay, so you can see the left ear is moving more than the right ear, so that might be a little bit of a problem, but that could be easily fixed as well. So you can, with your bone constraints, you can manipulate each bone individually, and we'll do that at the end, closer to the end of the tutorial to clean things up. But that might be a little bit much, so we'll dial it back down to like 20. We're gonna turn on our spring force to show how far that is actually going to be moving. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually looking at, let me go turn that off. What I'm looking at right now is his left ear. His right ear is not looking so great, but his left ear is looking pretty good. That's basically the effect, more or less, that I'm looking for. <clears throat> if I turn down my damping force, Let's go ahead and turn up the torque just a little bit more. I want a little bit more movement in that ear. That Now that right ear is doing exactly what I'd want it to. So you have to play with it a little bit. And that's really all you're doing is you're just playing with the settings and I'm just simply just scrolling my mouse wheel up and down while it's in real time. Okay, so that's good there. I won't play with that a little bit more because the part that I actually want to move is the tips of his ears. So I'm going to select those two parts of his ears, turn on my bone dynamics, and we will start adjusting those now. So we go our torque force. Okay. So as you can see there, that looks a little weird, but that's okay. So now we're going to turn on our spring force how far that's gonna move. So right there, that's actually the effect that I'm looking for with it flopping down right there. As he's jumping up, uh, I'm not liking it that much, but it's pretty, pretty dang close to what I'm looking for. And the damping force, we'll bring that down a little bit. Bring it up a little bit. Okay, perfect, okay. So that's just a way that you can use bone dynamics and the squash and stretch feature in Anime Studio to get more principles of animation out of your animation uh, really quickly using the tools of Anime Studio. I hope you like both of these tutorials on how to do this. And if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Um, I'm more than willing to answer any of your questions. Uh, also, download this character from my Gumroad page. Um, it was created by me. It was rigged by Mike Morris. Also follow him on his Tumblr and I will see you guys later. So I'd like to give a big thank you to Mike Morris who helped me create the bone rig for this character. To support Mike, definitely go to his Facebook page, Anna Mike Art. He's got an awesome Facebook page here that you can go and support. Um, he is the storyboard artist for Disney, soon to have his show released in the summer. Uh, used to be the storyboard artist for The Simpsons. Got a really, a lot of cool content on his website. Really awesome guy, very friendly. Definitely show him some support. Also, if you would like to go to gumroad.com slash McCoyBuck, you can uh, pull up my Gumroad page where you can see all of the rigs that I will be uploading and all of the stuff that you can get. Um, if you want to support the group, uh, you can donate at a certain price. So if you wanted to do like $5, um, it's really easy setup. You would just go into your payment, you would put in your information there, it's all secure, and then just enter in your email address. If not, if you wanted to do this for, uh, for, for free because you're a starving artist, you don't have the money, you can totally do that as well. Same thing, it is very simple. All you have to do is just put in your email address and those files will be emailed right to you for you to download 
I will be uploading versions 10 and 11 for the rabbit character um, because that does support the tools that we are using. If you want to follow me, go ahead and enter in your email address anytime I send out an update or download, upload a new character, um, you can get that sent straight to your email so you know everything that's going on. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in other videos. Also, be sure to join the Anime Studio Pros Facebook group, a group I created for you to learn, share, and collaborate with other Anime Studio animators. I'll see you later.